Hi everyone, my name is Kevin and today I have the Cuisinart CBK200 bread machine. I picked this up two years ago on my wedding registry. And Since then, uh, I've probably made about 50 to 60 loaves of bread. So just about every other weekend I make a loaf of bread using this bread machine. Now I've made so much bread with this, I have a good sense for the things that are good and the things that are bad about this bread machine. And I'd like to share that with you today. Uh, and what I'll do at the very end is I'm gonna make a sample loaf of bread here and I'll show you how it works. And at the very end, I'll let you know, would I recommend this bread machine if you're in the market for a bread machine? Uh, if not, should you look at other uh, bread machine models? And is a bread machine even worth it? Or should you, if you wanna make bread, should you just do it by hand? <laughs> One of the first questions is, why should you even get a bread machine? Now, I've had this bread machine for about two years now. Um, I did make bread uh, prior to getting this machine. What I would do is I would just make the bread by hand. I would knead it, I would mix all the ingredients, um, I would let it rise, and then I would bake it in the oven. Uh, and it's very doable without a bread machine. The nice thing about having a bread machine is, uh, the bread machine handles all of that for you. Really, all you have to do is you take the ingredients, you add them into the bread machine, you hit the start button, you might have to select a few settings here and there, but what it'll do then at the very end, it'll just beep and that'll notify you that your bread is ready. When you say buy a loaf of bread in the store, uh, it tastes pretty good, but when you look at the label at all the different ingredients they have in that loaf of bread, there's a lot of stuff that goes in there. Um, with my bread machine, you know, here are the ingredients that I would put into just a basic bread machine, a white loaf of bread, uh, and I, I could recognize all those ingredients there. When I'm reading a label, uh, say on a loaf I buy from the store, I don't know what half the stuff is on that loaf. Um, so also just knowing exactly what you're putting into your body is kind of a big benefit um, of making it yourself. The CBK200 is one of Cuisinart's bread machine models. They also have another model called the CBK100. Now this is the more advanced model, and, and so what I wanna do is I wanna just kinda give you a quick overview of what are the differences between those two models. Um, so with the CBK200, uh, one of the things you'll notice is the, that you have 16 different pre-programmed recipes recipes as part of this bread maker. Um, with the CBK100, you only get 12 recipes. So you have four fewer recipes um, as part of the CBK100. So uh, you'll notice this low carb recipe, the gluten free, I think also the artisan dough. And there's one more that you don't get with the CBK100. Um, also another feature with the uh, CBK200 um, is you'll notice that there's, uh, you have your heating element uh, at the bottom of the uh, kind of the bread maker compartment. Uh, but you also have this vent on the side. Uh, and what that is, is this is a convection bread maker. Uh, with a convection bread maker, what you'll get is it'll, um, when the heating element heats up the, uh, the air, the convection will blow that hot air around within the, uh, the bread making compartment. And the benefit of that is, is you get this nice crisp kind of uh, surface or uh, kind of uh, loaf texture on the outside. And, and so that's one of the big differences. The CBK100 is purely that heating element. Uh, now, the biggest difference between those two is the price. Uh, this, uh, the CBK200 uh, that I have here, this one, if you look at Amazon, uh, it runs for about $137, uh, versus the CBK100 goes for about $97, um, or about $95, $97, and so it's about a 40 to 50% difference uh, for these two different machines. And so one thing you have to question is, is a 40, 50% difference worth a convection and then also a few more options? Uh, that's up to you. I happened to get the, the CBK200 uh, uh, because I felt that it offered everything that I needed. So I thought one of the best ways to demonstrate what's good and what's bad about this bread machine is to actually make some bread and, and kind of as I'm making it, tell you the good things and the bad things. Uh, and today what I wanna do is I'm gonna make a bread machine white bread. It's, it's pretty much, uh, the most simple basic bread that you can make. Now, the, the nice thing about the Cuisinart bread machine is you get this recipe booklet and it has tons, uh, there, there must be about 100 different bread recipes that you can make with this, uh, so that's really nice. But what we're gonna do today is I'm gonna make this basic bread machine uh, white bread. Uh, and so here I have all the, all the different ingredients and, and with the bread machine, it's important uh, that you put the ingredients uh, in in the order that it's listed in the recipe. Um, so uh, let, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the uh, bread maker uh, container. Uh, I'm gonna put that into the bread machine here. It kind of snaps, in, uh, snaps into place. Uh, and the first ingredient that the recipe calls for is 3 fourths cup water. Uh, add that into the bread machine. So you put that in first. 
Uh, the next ingredients, ingredient that it calls for is, is some butter. I kind of cut them up into little chunks here, and uh, so I have them at room temperature. Uh, so I'm just going to add those into the bread machine there. 1.5 teaspoons of honey or sugar. Um, instead of just putting uh, sugar in, I prefer just using honey. So here I have my container of honey. So rather than measuring it, I'm just going to squeeze a little bit of honey just directly into the bread machine. The next ingredient is 3 fourths uh, teaspoon of salt. Uh, so here I have the salt. I'm going to go ahead and just kind of distribute that into the bread maker. Two cups of flour, so I have my flour here. I'm gonna go ahead and just add that in. So you can see um, here, I'll just uh, kind of, two tablespoons of dry milk. So I have the dry milk here. Um, I'm just gonna put that right on top of the flour. The last ingredient that the recipe calls for is uh, yeast, and that's the most important ingredient. So I'm just gonna put right on top. Uh, at the very end. Uh, and at this point I have all the ingredients in. And the nice thing about a bread machine is all you have to do is you put the ingredients in in the order listed and the bread machine takes care of the rest. Uh, so just a, a little tutorial of kind of the different options I have here uh, with the bread machine. Uh, so the first thing is I could choose the, the loaf size. So I could, I could either do a pound, 1.5 pounds, or two pounds. Uh, this specific uh, kind of ingredient set that I put in, this is, this is for the one pound. Um, I tend to do one pound uh, simply because uh, this way I could finish the bread faster um, and I eat it while it's fresh. If I go with two pounds, it lasts a little bit longer. Um, here what I could do is I could switch through the different sizes. Um, you'll notice as the size is larger, it also takes a little bit longer to, uh, to bake that bread. Uh, so I'm gonna go with one pound here. It takes about a little over three hours. Um, I could also choose the, the crust. Um, so you could go light, medium, or dark, uh, depending on how you like the crust. I'm gonna go with a medium crust here. Um, that, that seems like it comes out pretty nicely. I like that. Uh, kind of in addition, you also have the option to add mix-ins. I'm gonna turn off mix-ins since this is just the basic white bread. Um, I could also set a delay start timer on this. This is something I like. Uh, so you could go all the way to 12 hours out. So it takes the time that it's gonna take to make the loaf of bread, uh, and then it simply adds additional time on top of that um, if, if you want it to come out later. And, and this is something that's been very valuable if uh, say I wanna have a fresh loaf of bread in the morning, I could put all the ingredients in uh, the night before and when I wake up in the morning, I have this fresh loaf of bread ready to go. There's nothing like waking up uh, when you smell the fresh aroma of a bread in your house. Uh, but so I'm just gonna leave those settings as is. Uh, now I have the menu here and I wanna call out something I dislike about this menu. So here you see that I'm making just a basic white bread. So number one on this menu. Um, what I could do is I'll just click the menu button. Now I'm on number two. Uh, but to get back to number one, I basically have to scroll through this entire menu, uh, and now I'm back at number one. And it also resets my other settings here too. Um, so you just have to make sure that when you choose the number that you don't somehow pass it by mistake uh, because you have to go through the entire menu to get back. So one of the downsides of having 16 different pre-programmed options. Uh, so there, that's all good. Um, I have my start, menu, my start button, my stop and pause button. I could click start. Uh, what I could do is if you know somehow I select the wrong number and I need to reset, I could uh, press the stop pause button, hold it down for five seconds, and then I'll reset the cycle. Um, so that's something that's handy. I've, I've done that before. Now, uh, just two other things I want to call out about the bread maker that I don't like so much, but this is a universal problem with bread makers. Uh, you'll notice that there's a paddle in here. Uh, with that paddle, that'll help knead the bread and, and get it ready. But then before it's ready to bake, it'll beep uh, to tell me to take the paddle out. Uh, the, the trouble is the, the dough is kind of sticky and in getting the paddle out is kind of a pain. So I tend to leave it in. But then the problem is you have this paddle kind of in the middle of the loaf, uh, which then you have to get out once it's done. Um, even if you take the paddle out, there's a little kind of, uh, there, there's a little kind of uh, piece of metal that sticks up that the paddle attaches to. Um, and so even if you take the paddle out, you're still going to get a, a hole in the bottom of your bread. Uh, not much you could do about that, but that's kind of one downside of bread machines because it's not this perfect loaf. You're still going to have a hole um, or a paddle in your loaf depending on how you decide to do it. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit the uh, start button, uh, and that's going to kick off the bread maker. Uh, you can see looking in here, uh, it's starting to knead the, uh, all the ingredients together. It's going to start forming the dough. Uh, you know, one thing about this bread maker uh, that, you know, sometimes it works well, sometimes it doesn't work well. Uh, you'll notice how you get some flour on the edges of the container here. You know, usually if you let it knead, it'll pick up all the flour and everything will end up inside. But I've also had some loaves of bread uh, that I've made before where you, you just have kind of the raw flour on the outside of the loaf uh, because not everything uh, ended up uh, kind of getting mixed in properly. Um, kind of one workaround you could do, this is a little hack, um, is you could just take a, a spatula 
And what I could do is I could kind of push in the flour on the edges uh, just to make sure everything gets mixed in. Um, I'm doing it pretty early here. Uh, but that way you just kind of make sure you have this perfect loaf of bread that uh, comes out. Um, and then one of the nice things, so here you'll see I, I put down the top to the bread maker. I have this little window in here that you can kind of peek into. You can see how your bread is coming along. And it's kind of fun to peek in and, and just check on the progress. So the bread machine is now working and in, in three hours this bread machine is going to start beeping to let me know that my bread is ready to go. Uh, so in the meantime, what I wanted to do is just tell you about a few more things that I both like and dislike about this bread machine. One of the really nice things about this bread machine is uh, it comes with this recipe book with a whole bunch of different recipes. Uh, there are all sorts of bread that you can make, whether it's white bread, whether it's rosemary bread, focaccia bread, I could even make pizza dough. So there are all types of bread I can make with this. Now, a lot of these recipes are really delicious, uh, but I've also had some duds in here. For example, there was a chocolate peanut butter recipe that I made and it just did not turn out uh, tasting very good. It was just very dense and uh, I ended up throwing away most of it. So many of the recipes are good, but there are a few duds in the mix. Another thing about this bread machine that uh, I don't like that much is you have this nice display. It kind of tells you most of the things that are going on. Uh, but one thing I've noticed is sometimes a bread machine will beep and the bread machine will beep to let you know that, well, it's time to take the paddle out. It's time to put mix-ins in. Uh, the trouble is there, you get a different number of beeps uh, telling you to do a different operation. For example, uh, five beeps might be to take the paddle out, six beeps might be to you know, add your mix-ins. And the problem is when you hear five beeps or six beeps, beeps it's kind of hard to know what to do unless you look back at the manuals and then you have to pull out the instruction book, you have to look at the number of beeps and you have to associate that with the action you need to take. And then you also need to just make sure you're paying attention to how many beeps you hear. Uh, that's one thing, you know, if, they, if there was simply a display that pointed at exactly what you needed to do, uh, or a little light next to an option, that'd be a lot easier than trying to make sense of random beeps. Uh, so that, that's one thing I don't like. You know, one thing I also thought was interesting about this bread maker is, uh, you know, here for all the different pre-programmed options, uh, you'll notice probably the most popular one is number one, which is the white bread. But for whatever reason, they decided to bold low carb and gluten free. Uh, I don't know why they're drawing so much attention to those two options uh, compared to all these other options. You know, my guess is the marketing department, you know, for the CPK 200, that's one of the, of the differentiators between this and other bread makers. So they really wanted to draw attention to it. But it's a little odd that, you know, two of them are bold and all the, all the other ones aren't. Uh, so I, I, I'm not sure I really understand that one. Uh, there's some type of bread uh, that you can make, like what, say you're making a focaccia bread as an example. Um, this uh, kind of, the, the baking area in here is only so big and when you make a focaccia bread, uh, you need, it needs to be kind of flatter and you need a, a larger, um, I guess, surface to place it on and so you have to end up baking it in your oven. Uh, so the, the one downside is there are some breads that, you know, the, the bread machine does kind of the full end-to-end -end process, but there are some breads uh, that you have to put in the oven as well to kind of finish the job. And, and so that's kind of one downside too, because I was hoping I can make any type of bread in, uh, in the bread machine and it would do the complete job, uh, but there are some that you have to cook elsewhere. So this bread machine is gonna run for about three hours and then I'll have some fresh bread ready. And what we'll do is I'll check back in in three hours and we'll see how this bread turns out. There's one minute to go, and now the bread is just about ready to come out. That is the sound of the, the bread maker finishing up this loaf of bread. So let's take a look and see what this looks like. There is a fresh loaf of white bread. Pull this out of the bread maker. There we go. Out of the container. There you'll see, it just kind of slides right out. Uh, this is nice and hot. And uh, what you'll see is this is a beautiful loaf of bread. Take a look at that. I uh, couldn't have made it any better. Uh, it's perfectly browned on the outside. Uh, here you'll notice the, uh, the hole at the bottom of the, the bread maker. This is from the, um, so I left the paddle in and then also the hole from the bottom of the, uh, the container that it sat in. Uh, so you see a little hole, that, I mean one downside, but it uh, doesn't detract from this just being a delicious uh, loaf of bread. Uh, but just look at that, just perfect, uh, perfect brownness, uh, kind of feels fluffy on top. Uh, this thing is just gorgeous. Uh, can't wait to cut this open and uh, see what this tastes like. I brought my wife Carrie over uh, because she's gonna see how good it is. I've got to taste test it. I mean, a wife's got to do what a wife's got to do. Okay, do you want to cut I'll it open honors. and see how it is?
Oh, look at that steam coming out. That looks good. It's beautiful. Look at this. Oh, wow. Look at that. Do I get the first bite, even though you did all the hard work? You can take the first bite. <laughs> happy life, happy life. How does it taste? It's delicious. Good? Mm hmm I don't know if I want to share it with you. <laughs> <laughs> Would you like a bite? I'm going to try some. Let's try and see how this tastes. Turned out really good. It's delicious. I nice think. and fluffy on the inside and then kind of a nice brown crust on the outside. I think Kevin should be in charge of all the food from now on. <laughs> I'm in charge of all the cooking moving forward. I think so. Well, hey, so that wraps up the episode today. Um, delicious loaf of bread. One tip that I want to tell you before we head out. Uh, one thing you could do is when you have a loaf of bread and you cut off one end of the bread, you have kind of the fluffy open area and then you have the hard exterior. One way you could keep your bread longer is when you store it, what you do is you simply uh, take your bread and you, uh, you place it down so the soft area um, faces the surface. And the benefit of that is it's really amazing, but it'll hold your bread a lot longer. So just one of the kind of quick bread hacks that I learned recently from a friend of mine. Um, so just to close off this episode, I, I wanna talk about whether I recommend the CBK2, uh, 200 Cuisinart bread maker. Um, this is a fantastic bread maker. We probably use it about every other weekend. And, and so for that reason, you know, I think it's well worth getting. Uh, there, there's no other way you can have a homemade delicious loaf of bread uh, more easily than with a bread maker like this. So I would highly recommend it. What, what do you think, Carrie? It's approved by the wife. <laughs> nice. Well, anyway, I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, please give it a big thumbs up. And if you want to see more episodes like this, please subscribe. And that way you'll get notified anytime new content like this comes out. Uh, thanks again. I'll see you next time. Bye.